We're going to start off with David Johnson from 24-7 Sports. Hey, Chris, just uh, wanted to get your perspective on a couple of guys uh, in particular. What chance Campbell has meant as a new addition to this defense this year? And also what you've seen from Sam Williams since you guys got here last year, year before last, and, uh, you know, in terms of his on the field and off the field growth. Yeah, absolutely. Um, first off, I'll address the first one, Chance. Um, he, I mean, he, he's he's been everything to, to this team. He's come in and, um, you know, he just showed who he was as a person to get integrated so fast and, um, you know, and, and win the starting spot. And, you know, with his leadership, I mean, he's, he was viewed, you know, day one as – as a, as a leader on this team and a competitor. And, you know, he, he leads with, with, with actions, right? Not as much words. Um, so he, he's a worker, he's a film watcher. Um, he loves the game and, and, and he brings guys along with him to, uh, to really show them the way on how it's supposed to be done. Um, so, I mean, it, it's hard to put into words what he's meant to this team. He's, he's, he's really been incredible for us. Um, you know, Sam, obviously, you know, it's, uh, it, it's been, it's been awesome, man. It's, it's hard not to love him. Um, you know, he, he's really, really bought into the football team, um, you know, uh, over the last two years and, and, and got away from him himself and, and really just, you know, put in the work ethic on and off the field to, uh, to, to really change his life. I mean, it's, it's been pretty special. Um, you know, and he, he had a son along the way, which, which I think puts a lot of things into perspective. And, uh, you know, he, he's really a guy that, that you're going to root for hard going forward, um, you know, obviously in this game and, and moving forward. But he, you know, those two guys you just mentioned are a big part of the reasons that we were able to get this thing going and, uh, and win 10 games this year. Go to David Ubbin from The Athletic. If you may be on mute, David. Got you, Kimmy. Yes. Yeah, we got you. Thank you. What, what do you feel like it's meant to the guys on this team, especially the older guys, to, to experience the kind of success that they've had this year when, when that hadn't been the case, you know, for the last uh, – for a lot of these guys, uh, most of their careers here? <laughs> um, I mean, it means everything. I mean, the fun is in the win, in winning, right? So, uh, you know, I, I think it, it means everything for them to stick it out and, um, and go through some highs and lows and – you know, it's just, it's, it's life lessons, you know, as you go through this and you learn how to, you know, you know, build a team and, um, you know, and, and come from, you know, uh, a defense that was laughed at, to, you know, to, to competitive on the football field that can shut that down anyone. I mean, it's, it, it's for us, it's just, it, it's awesome to see. And it's awesome, you know, to grow young men. That's what we're in this for, you know, yeah, to win football games and that's where the fun is, but, you know, to see them grow and, um, and, and see the glow in their eyes and the, and the excitement they had to go play this football game is, is, is what you look at as a coach and, and makes you happy and, and know that, you know, we've done it the right way. So, you know, it, it's a special feeling for them. And, uh, you know, it's funny, I was talking to Lakia Henry just, uh, just before, and he, he said, coach, I, I mean, I, I wore a mask around my, uh, my, my own son, you know, over Christmas, because this is the first time I get to go to a bowl game. And you realize he, last year he missed it because of COVID. So, you know, it's just, it's a special opportunity for these guys and, um, you know, it's his first, you know, some of them, it's their first ball game of their life and other ones it's, it's from last year, but it's, it's really the first big one. And, you know, they're, they're excited for it. We'll go to Neil McCready from rebelgrove.com. Hey, Chris, I'm curious. You mentioned after last season and some of the seasons before when the, the numbers weren't good and, and guys weren't exactly thrilled with the way the season went, how did, when, when things didn't go well defensively against Arkansas in that game, how did you guys kind of hold it together? DJ was talking about how guys really after that said, hey, we put a lot of work into this. Let's supply it with each other. But how difficult was that to kind of keep confidence after, you know, 676 yards and 51 points against an SEC team? Yeah, it wasn't difficult at all because we didn't shy away from it last year. You know, we, we hit it right in the mouth and, uh, and, and we believe in each other. And we believe in, in, in the, in the process, you know, the process that we needed. And, um, and so we didn't, I mean, we sat in here and we watched it and, and we were hard on ourselves and, you know, and, uh, and didn't shy away. So, you know, it was just something that, you know, we, we got to get back to work and we got to continue. And there was really good moments in that game too. I mean, you know, I, shoot, I forgot to score at, at halftime, but we were playing pretty well. And then it kind of fell apart and, you know, um, we, we just knew that, you know, we had to do some different things as coaches. Um, you know, we were asking guys to play 99, 100 snaps in a game and we had to, we had to adapt 
and do some th different things. And uh, I think we we all looked at ourselves, you know, after that game because we felt we had a pretty good defense. We all looked at ourselves after that game and um, and pushed ourselves to get up and, and get better. So I don't think that's hard. I think that's part of this thing. You know, everyone wants to, you know, go undefeated and shut everyone out, but that's not realistic. That's not real life. So when, you know, if, you, if you're looking at attacking this, like, like real life and, and overcoming things, then, then I don't think it's very hard at all. Next is Nick Suss from the Clarion Ledger. Chris, we've heard so much this year about how Springer can sometimes be the engine of the defense. Mm -hmm. he, he's not exactly filling up the stat sheet. So from a coach's perspective, what is it that he does so well that allows you guys to play through him? Play as, as hard as, as you can. Um, he's, he's violent. He's aggressive. Um, you know, he'll take anyone's head off at any moment. You, you feel him on the field, um, you know, so, you know, that, that's what he does, all the intangible stuff. Um, you know, obviously, you know, he, he missed, you know, those, those couple games in the middle of the year, and that was a tough loss for us because he was the engine. He was the leader, and, you know, when he went out, we had to adapt and, um, you know, move some stuff around. But when he came back, he, he re-energized us. And, um, you know, he's, you know, sometimes the stats aren't always, you know, the telling truth, but, you know, what he does on the field and what, what he's able to, uh, I guess, the, the, what he's able to get these guys to feel out there is, is what the most important thing is. And he, he, I mean, he's awesome. I mean, he's one of my favorite people I've ever coached in my life because he'll, you know, he, he, you t he'll do something wrong and he'll be so angry at, at, at himself and he'll want to fight you. And it's just, it's, it's fun. It's every day. It's, it's a fun deal. You know, he's just, he has that about him. Time for one more question. We'll go to Ted Lewis from the New Orleans Times Picayune. Yes, uh, how, your point. Ted, I'm not getting you. We, we lost you, Ted. Ted, we lost you. My, my apologies. We're, we're going to go to Eric Kelly now from Waco. DJ talked about Baylor and how they're unique in the fact that they, you know, they know they're going to run it down. They're gonna, you're gonna run. They're gonna run against you, but they still have that sort of success. What's that difficulty in a team where you know they're gonna run, but they still seem to get pick up four or five yards and carry? Yeah, um, you know they, they they're really good at what they do, right? They, you know they they uh, the, the way they run the ball, you know they 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 run stretch and um, you know and then they they run it in a different a lot of different ways. They dress it up and um, they'll hit it in all different spots. You know, so you got to be really, really sound, you know, uh, in all the gaps. And that's the front, the linebackers, the safeties, you know, the edges, the corners at times. Like, everybody's got to be sound because, you know, they hit it all over the field. And I like it a little bit to, like, Mississippi State in the past game, right, where they only run a certain amount of plays, but they know all the issues with it and they know where to hit it, where to put the ball. Um, Baylor's similar in the run game. Um, so, you know, it's something where, you know, we got to get negative plays. We got to knock them back. And we got to rally, we got to be gap sound, and we got to tackle and, um, you know, play sound fundamental football and, and play hard. You know, get 11 guys running at, the, run, running at the running back and, you know, and hit, you know, it'll, it'll uh, knock them back and force them to throw the ball down the field. Thank you very much for your time this afternoon, Coach. We really yeah. appreciate it. During no problem. Thanks, time. guys.